Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know that I've been missing for about a month. It's because that tuition center has just reopened and then I have online class and also physical class. My time is so packed that I have no time to do YouTube video. So today, here am I. I'm going to continue with my videos as well. So I will continue with chapter 3, uh, which is 3.3 this part. I'm going to use 9 diagram to explain your textbook 4 to 5 pages by using this 9 diagram, which is under osmosis, which is under... Uh, movement across plasma membrane in our daily life. Okay, so everything here is about osmosis. If you don't know what is osmosis, it means that uh, they are under passive transport. Passive transport means it will move from high water concentration to low water concentration. We call it as water potential, okay? More to lesser water. Everything here is more to lesser water. Now, before we learn about all this diagram, right, we have to look at the three solutions. The first solution is hypotonic solution. What does hypo mean? Hypo means more water, lesser solute. So we have to know the meaning of solute, right? What is the solute? Anything that is not water, we call it as solute, which is salt, sugar, vinegar, as long as they are not water, it means they are solute. So what is water? Water has also another name called solvent. Solvent, okay? So water is also known as solvent. La. So they are the same thing. And then we have isotonic. Isotonic means they are equal. Everything is equal, okay? Means water concentration and the salt, uh, the salt concentration is the same, or sucrose concentration, they are the same. So it must be the same, like the water concentration and whatever thing that is not water, they are the same. But in our daily life, I think the best example that we use is 100 plus. Because 100 plus, we call it as isotonic thing, right? Because it's equal to human blood stream. So it's isotonic, okay? For in daily life, like it will be 100 plus. And then we have hypertonic. What is hypertonic? Hypertonic means lesser water. Lesser water means more solid. I'm going to use water as my reference point because it's easier. So remember, hypo means more water. Hyper means lesser water. Iso means equal. Okay, we're going to start from the first one, which is animal cell. Animal cell example will be rib blood cell as well. So they give you three different diagrams, right? Or they give you two diagrams. They ask you to explain what happened to the rib blood cell. How do you know? Now, we have to know one fact, okay? More water to lesser water, right? As I mentioned, anything that is more water, it will always diffuse into lesser water. So when they immerse, I have a red blood cell, when I immerse into hypotonic solution, what is the example of hypotonic solution? Uh, we will use distilled water, lah, because distilled water is always 100% water. So I have red blood cell and the distilled water. So which one got more water? Obviously, distilled water got more water, right? As I mentioned, more water, they will diffuse into lesser water. So the water will diffuse into the red blood cell. We have to remember a fact of red blood cell. Red blood cell got no cell wall. So when water keep on diffusing into it, right? Okay, as you can see here, when water keep on diffusing into it, then the red blood cell is going to burst. So we call it as hemolysis. Why? Because lysis means breakdown. What does hemol mean? Hemol means hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, obviously, they refers to the red blood cell. Okay? So it's a breaking down of a red blood cell. We call this as hemolysis. Because water keep on diffusing into it because they immerse into a hypotonic solution. Because hypo means more water, then the red blood cell will be lesser water. More water to lesser water. And then the next one, if I put red blood cell into 100 plus, because 100 plus is isotonic, right? They are same. How do we consider as isotonic for red blood cell? Red blood cell, if it's isotonic, right? It has a concentration. The concentration will be 0.85 to 0.9% of NaCl solution. NaCl refers to salt solution. So this, this is the amount where we known as an isotonic to red blood cell. Can only be 0.85 to 0.9. If it's more than 0.9, it means it's hyper. If it's lesser than 0.9 or lesser than 0.85, right, it will be hypotonic. So it must be this, this range, okay? This range, we call this as isotonic. So I put red blood cell, into isotonic solution because they are the same, right? Same means what? Same, the water will diffuse into it and water will also diffuse out. They will diffuse in and diffuse out at the same rate. We call this as no net movement of water. No net movement is not equals to no movement. No net movement means today I give you 10 ringgit. Tomorrow you return me back 10 ringgit. We call it no net movement. Because if it's a net movement, right? It means that I give you 10 ringgit, you give me back 1 ringgit. Uh, then it's not equal already, right? Okay, because I have net loss. You're going to have net gain. Uh, then it's different already. So if it's equal, right, then the rate must be equal. So if 10 water molecule diffuses into it, there will be 10 water molecule diffuses out because we call this as no net movement. Remember, no net movement is not equal to no movement. No net movement, it means they are equal. Equal, uh, 10 in, 10 out. Uh, okay, it must be equal. Uh. So wavelet cell remains unchanged. What is the shape of wavelet cell? Obviously, they are biconcave shape. 
So they remain as a biconcave D-shape if it's an isotonic. Then if it's hypertonic, hyper means what? Hyper means lesser water, more solid, right? So same thing, I have red blood cell. I have 30% sucrose solution. Sucrose solution means sugar solution. Now we're going to compare. Everything you're going to know is, is comparison first. Immersed into hypertonic, right? So obviously that the sucrose solution got lesser water. And then red blood cell got more water, right? So more water, it will diffuse into lesser water, okay? Red blood cell got more water, right? More water, it will diffuse into lesser water. So obviously it means that this red blood cell is going to shrink. They become smaller in size. This smaller in size, we call this as crenation. Crenate, it means strings. Uh, so it's called crenation. So we have done with red blood cell. So you can see we have hemolysis, it means bursting. We have crenation, it means strings. Okay. Next, we have plant cell. Now, plant cell is a very special cell. Why? Because they have a cell wall. So they will not going to burst okay? because they have a cell wall, right? Now, same thing. I have plant cell. I have hypotonic solution. Same thing. I'm going to use distilled water. Which one got more water? Of course, distilled water got more water, right? Water will diffuse into the cell, okay? They will diffuse into the cell. Now, as they diffuse into the cell, the, the vacuole, it will expand in size because, you know, vacuole is the one that contains of water, contains of mineral, contains of cell set, right? So water will diffuse into the vacuole, so the vacuole will expand in size. So this term, we call this as tergit because when we talk about tergit, right, we have to know there is a pressure. This pressure known as a Turgo pressure. If you remember in chapter two, I explained what is the turgo pressure. It happens in the vacuole. Turgo pressure able to provide support. If you don't know this, you can watch back my chapter two video. I've, I explained it in the vacuole part. Okay, it's quite turgo pressure, or we call it as TGDT. So it's to provide support to herbaceous plant. So herbaceous plant is non woody plant now. Okay, so this is turgid, means they expand in size. When the water diffuses into it, they expand in size. We call this as turgid. So the plasma membrane will push against the cell because they become fatter and fatter, right? But they will not burst. They will just push against the cell wall because it has a cell wall. They will never burst, okay? Next, isotonic means what? Iso means equal. Water diffuses in and diffuses out at the same rate. Remember, we're not going to write no movement. We have to write what? We have to write no net movement of water. No net movement of water means the water diffuses in and diffuses out at the same rate. We call it no net movement of water. Okay, next one, we have hypertonic. What does hypertonic mean? As I mentioned, hypertonic means lesser water, right? Just now, I used 20% sucrose solution, right? Now, I'm going to use 20% NaCl, which is a sodium chloride solution. Sodium chloride means salt solution. Uh. I have 20% salt solution and plant cell. Which one got more water? Obviously, it's the plant cell because this one got more salt, right? The 20% salt solution. So plant cell got more water. Again, more water, it will diffuse into lesser water. When it diffuses into lesser water, right, the water diffuses out from the vacuole. So the vacuole becomes smaller in size. Okay, it becomes smaller in size. And then the plasma membrane will pull away from the cell wall. We call this as plasmolysis. This word here, call this as plasmolysis. Okay, so the plasma membrane pull away from the cell wall. So the question they will also ask you, right now I have a plant cell. Did it undergo plasmolysis? Okay, they add plasmolysis. That means they strings. Uh, if I put it back to... A hypotonic solution, would it go back to the normal shape? If I put it back to hypotonic, so I have a plasmolyzed cells, I have a distilled water. Will distilled water diffuses into the plasmolyzed cell? The answer is yes, because what? More water to lesser water. So distilled water got more water, right? They will diffuse into the vacuole, so they will expand in size. When they expand in size, it looks like number one, this diagram, or number two, this diagram. The answer is number one. Why? Because water diffuses into the vacuole until the maximum size, right? So when they reverse, right, a reverse diagram, if they immerse into a hypotonic solution, the word here we use as deplasmolysis, okay? Deplasmolysis. Deplasmolysis, you can only use when a plasmolyzed cell immerses into hypotonic solution. So when do we use tergit? When do we use Plasmolysis. Tergit is when the question says a plant cell immersed into hypotonic solution. Uh, if it's a plant cell, then it will be tergit. If the question says a plasmolyzed cell immersed into hypotonic solution, then the answer will be deplasmolysis. So you have to find the keywords in the question itself. Okay, you just need to find the keyword. Out. So this is plasmolysis or deplasmolysis. 
Only plant cell can reverse back to the original shape. Animal cell cannot because animal cell got no cell wall. Okay, next we have, uh, by the way, the explanation is over here, just in case you don't know what it is. Okay, the explanation is over here where the phenomena is called the phosmolysis when it becomes turgid again. Uh. Next, the last one is mustard green stem. What is a mustard green stem? Mustard green stem, it means it's a plant cell also. Um, in your school experiment, you're going to use potato or you're going to use any plant cell. Uh, okay? Usually, they use potato. Uh. So, you're going to cut the potato into strip or a stem. Okay? You're going to cut equal shape and you immerse into different solutions. So, you have to remove it with the cuticle itself. Okay? Now, what is a cuticle? Everyone should know, cuticle is a waxy layer, right? This waxy layer, it will not allow any water to diffuse into it because it's a waxy layer. Now, same thing. I have distilled water. I have a mustard green stem because they are also plant cell, right? Okay, which one they will get water? Obviously, it's the mustard green stem because distilled water got more water. The water will diffuse into lesser water. The mustard green stem has lesser water. So the water will diffuse into the cell. But whenever we talk about mustard green stem, we have to take note of a part, which is the cuticle. So this part here is the cuticle. We all know cuticle waxy layer right, is waterproof. Waterproof means the water will never diffuse into the cuticle. So what happens is the water will diffuse from the flesh itself. Uh, this is the flesh. Uh, they will diffuse into the flesh. Then they will curve outwards. Okay, later I will teach you how to really differentiate whether it's a curve outwards or curve inwards. Uh. Next, if it's isotonic, right? Iso means what? Same. Remember, cuticle is a waxy layer the waxy layer will never take in any water. So the water will diffuse in and diffuse out at the same rate. So as I mentioned, diffuse in and diffuse out at the same rate, we use it as no net movement of water. Remember, it's not no movement, it's called no net movement of water. The last one, hypertonic. Hypertonic means what? I have uh, vinegar, like, okay, for example, vinegar, and I have a uh, mustard green stem. Which one got more water? Of course, it's mustard green stem with more water, right? More water, they will diffuse into lesser water. So the water will diffuse out from the flesh. The cortex, it means the flesh. Uh. Cuticle, it means the waxy layer. So they will curve inwards. I have a lot of students, they cannot differentiate whether it's a curve inwards or curve outwards. Okay, now, we're going to use our imagination. I don't know whether any one of you are good at imagination or not. Okay, just assuming that you guys are good at imagination. Now we're going to imagine this one. Okay, curve outwards. Uh. Imagine this as a human. Cuticle as the backbone, human backbone. You all know how pregnant women walk. If you guys remember, right, pregnant women, they always put their hands at the back because they want to support their tummy, right? Because the tummy is outside, right? And this curve upward track is the same because they keep on getting water, right? They become fatter and fatter. Then you imagine a cuticle as a backbone. Uh, I have the head, I have the leg, and then this is the hand. And the red color part is the backbone. So imagine this is a pregnant woman. So if it's a pregnant woman, then it will curve outwards. You all can try to do the action, then you will remember it's a curve outwards. Okay? If it's ISO means same size, so same size, nothing to explain. Curve inwards. How to remember curve inwards? Uh, imagine as an old grandma or old grandpa. You know, old people, when they walk, right, they use a tongka, then they will hunch their back, something like that. So this is the head. Uh, the cuticle is the one that is red color. Uh, cuticle will never take in water on, uh. This is a backbone. This is the leg. And this is the tongka. Okay, this is the hand and tongka, okay? So they were like, you no know, old people, they use the tongka to walk. So this is curved inward. You can do the action by yourself. If you do this action, right, it means curved inward, right? If you do this action, it means curved outwards, right? So if you cannot differentiate, just do the action, then you will know whether it's curved inwards or curved outwards. If it's curved inwards, it means the water diffuses in. Oh, sorry. If it's a curved outwards, it means the water diffuses into it, into the body. So that's why you have a baby, right? It means the water diffuses into it. That's why it's a pregnant woman. This is a pregnant woman, okay? Now, of course, by knowing how to differentiate is not enough. We have to know how to draw the diagram. Whenever you draw, whenever you look at the diagram, right, as I mentioned, look at the cuticle first. If it's curved outwards, how are we going to draw curved outwards? Okay, imagine this is the cuticle. Okay, cuticle, right? And this is curved outwards, okay? So the water diffuses into it from this direction. It can also be this direction also. This is the cuticle. Oh, yeah, a bit, a bit, not enough space. Okay, it can be like that also. So this is a cuticle. And then this is also curved outwards. The water diffuses it. So no, it doesn't matter where is the direction. As long as you find which part is the cuticle. Because cuticle is the part that you will never get in water. As long as you can show a pregnant woman also can. If you still cannot get, imagine this is a head. This is the leg. This is the head. Uh, this is the head now, okay? This is the head. This is the leg. This is the head, okay? It's like two pregnant women. 
So just find the cuticle, okay? I think if it's the same one, nothing, nothing much to draw. Like it's the same shape, okay? But if it's curved inwards, how to draw curved inwards? Okay, this is the cuticle. This is curved inwards. Okay, curved inwards. The water diffuses out. Okay, if it's another diagram, if it's this direction, okay, then it will be like that. The water diffuses out. So you just find the cuticle, guys. You just find a cuticle, then you get the answer already. Nothing, nothing special here. Just find the cuticle. Now, down with this one, we're going to look at the red blood cell and plant cell. How are we supposed to draw the diagram? So first of all, let's look at red blood cell. Now, if you want to draw a hemolysis diagram, right, you can draw something like that, a bursting balloon. Okay, then we have this one. Okay, a bursting balloon or something like that. Okay, as long as you can show that they are bursting, it's called hemolysis. If it's the same one, they don't ask you to draw one. Lah. If it's a crenation, crenation, you can draw like a star shape, something like that. As long as you can show that they are crenated. Lah. Means they string. No longer in, no longer in a, a biconcave this shape and can already. If it's a plant cell with tergit, how do we draw tergit? Draw a cell wall. And then we have a plasma membrane. Draw a big back hole to show that they are immersing in a hypotonic solution. You draw a big back hole and then you have the nucleus. You can put a dot, 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 dot to represent cytoplasm. As long as you draw a big back hole, your answer is correct. If it's the same size, right? Okay, later I'll show you the same size, okay? And then if it's a plasmolysis, how do we draw plasmolysis? So whenever you draw, please draw a two membrane over here. Okay, and then we have plasma membrane that pull away from the plant cell, okay? And then we have a smaller vacuole and a dot. So just dot, 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 dot to represent the plasma membrane. So this is how it looks like when we draw about plasmolysis. If they ask you to draw a middle diagram, how do we draw a middle diagram? The, the, this middle one, which is no net movement of water, right? No net movement of water when you draw, right? You just draw a normal size vacuole. Not too big, not too small. Bigger than this one, Smaller than this one, okay? Bigger than this one, smaller than this one. It's the middle size, uh, and then you draw a nucleus, then you draw dot, 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 dot to represent the, plus, the, the, the cytoplasm. In your textbook, you also use a term which is flaccid to explain uh, this thing. So this is the one in the green color one, okay? So the one that I highlighted over here, it's very, 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 very important. So you have to know the one that is highlighted over here because if they ask you to explain, whenever you have to explain, right, you have to involve the one which I written here. Hemolysis, crenation, plasmolysis, flaccid, tergit, curve inwards, curve outwards, okay? No net movement of water, everything is the same. Lah. So this is basically how we differentiate by using the nine diagram over here. Can, guys? Okay, so we're going to stop over here because I've done with 3.3. Um, hopefully that I can upload another video as soon as possible because the time is really packed for me. Lucky I will find time to take more videos. Hope you guys understand this subtopic well. Any question you can comment below. So I will see you guys next time then. Bye guys. Stay safe and be healthy. Okay. Bye.